The Olden World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 171 Restful Travel. The orange lit gates of Blue Leaf receded into the distance as Starlight, Maple, and Belay's machine driven cart hummed its way into the Earth District, shadowed by rain thick enough to obscure the pony's vision. All around them, darkened outlines of trees bent beneath the hammering force, but the round canvas roof over their heads held solid, and they didn't get any wetter. That wasn't to say that they were dry. Starlight and Valet had fared well, thanks to the bad pony's speed, but Elise had levitated Maple two seconds slower, and that made all the difference. Maple licked at her coat, shivering, trying to brush the water away, wet but not soaked through. <laughs> Starlight blinked around the cart interior, looking for anything that might help. It was relatively bare, a flat wooden floor smelling of fruit juices. It was relatively bare, a flat wooden floor smelling of fruit juices, low walls with railings designed to keep crates from sliding away, a crowbar laying in a corner next to a paint can, empty and on its side. Don't you have a blanket or something? she asked, looking up. In your cutie mark? Maple stopped licking, sheepish. I actually don't. Her ears folded. I didn't think when we were leaving we wouldn't have a place to stay that would have all that, so I didn't bring food or bedding or anything actually important. All I brought was all my money and a book if I got bored. Story Starlight. I guess I should have asked you how to prepare for an adventure, shouldn't I? You brought a book, huh? You brought a book, huh? Blay glanced over from where she was lounging against the railing. That's cool. I like books. They're hilarious. Well, this one isn't a comedy, Maple smiled sadly. It's a thriller set in a dingy city. Kind of pointless to read about since we're living one right now, but you can borrow it if you like. Oh, nah. Blay shook her head. I didn't mean for me to read. I just like planting cheesy romance novels in guards' lockers so they fall out when you open the door. I do have this, I guess. Maple hesitated, then dropped Neon Nova's giant trench coat to the floor. It looks kind of warm. Ew, you still have that thing? I told you to get rid of that. It's probably nasty. Valet flinched back, glaring at it. Full of knives and stuff, too. Come on, don't wear that. You can totally do better. Hold on. Starlight cut in, pointing a hoof. Hold on, Starlight cut in, pointing a hoof. Aren't you carrying my saddlebags? I had a blanket in there. You even washed it for me, remember? Maple's lips pursed, and her eyes widened in remembrance. You did! I actually forgot your pack wasn't empty. She paused, and an instant later, Starlight's saddlebags tumbled to the ground in front of her. Do you mind if I use it then? Um, no, Starlight mumbled, rooting for the bags with her nose. The blanket spilled out, alongside a trio of empty water flasks and two objects wrapped in waterproof casing. She stopped and stared, passing the blanket off to Maple and pulling the object closer. Her fake cutie mark kit. It seemed lifetimes ago that she had actually used it, even though it had been closer to a week. Why had she stamped on her flank, using a paper cutout and ashes taken from the family hearth? An equal sign, to say that no matter what ponies were given on their flanks, they shouldn't be treated differently? Funny how quickly she had found different things to worry about, there in Iron Ridge, where ponies were oppressed randomly because of where they lived or because there was someone who could, or for no reason at all. Ooh, what you got there? Valet leaned in, curious. Suddenly, Starlight remembered the contents of the other wrapped package. It was the world's most boring book, stolen from a desk in the mountains and read through countless times while she was recovering from her cold in a cave. She wasn't entirely sure why she still had it. Aside from the obvious, she had forgotten it existed and never left it behind. But the mere memory of its scent was enough to give her flashbacks of laying on stone, coughing and wiping her nose and doing nothing else for hours on end, and that wasn't the thing she was willing to let be used as a conversation starter. This is the world's most interesting book, she proudly proclaimed, holding up the book package in one hoof. I read it at least twenty times in one week. Want to see it? Oh, Belay backed away, skeptical. Yeah, no. I can smell a prank from miles away. Shrugging, Starlight stuffed the book, cutie market, and water flasks back into her pack. Okay, you're lost. 
Boredom? I've heard it. She crawled over, joining Maple under her blanket, a pack at her side. Perhaps someday she could find a pony who would actually like it to pawn it off on. Here and by, once she got the Riverfall, maybe. Or she could give it as a prank. But right then, she was content to settle in, let the ride happen, and not think about those days crossing the mountains. It's nice to be off our hoofs for once, Maple murmured beside her, mirroring her thoughts. Meh, you guys are just lazy. The lace stretched, hind legs reaching almost parallel to her body. Of course, I am too, so I shouldn't be talking. What were you doing up there anyway, Maple asked, draping a foreleg around Starlight's shoulders. That took a lot longer than I would expect for locking up a villain. The lace smirked. Yeah, bet it did. Get this. Herman and Selma basically ambushed me in the fort, and Herman was like, Hey, you, go do these chores. It was 100% busy work. He even made it longer than it needed to be just to bug me. Seriously, I'm pretty sure I've complained about this to you before, but that guy has it out for me big time. It's like he wants to steal my title of biggest jerk in Iron Ridge, but still keep up a good reputation. Really? Maple tilted her head. What is his reputation even? I don't think I've heard very much about him aside from what you said. In a nutshell, Nobody who isn't super naive likes or fully trusts him, but everyone thinks he's on their side, so they don't want to actually say bad stuff about him. Valet drew a hoof along the wooden floor, thumping slightly as its edge ran across cracks between the thick boards. It's the kind of thing where everyone wishes they could catch him playing dirty, but no one actually can, and even if they did, they'd have to all mutually agree to do something about it for fear he just helped their opponents to get back on him, so he's pretty much invincible. Maple nodded, one ear slipping free of the blanket that she used as a hood. What kind of things is he doing for them to catch? Honestly? Blay shrugged. Not much. That's why nobody can catch him. He lies a bunch, but everyone does that, so that's the norm up in Skyfreeze. But Sloop hauls in laws and then abuses them, stores stuff in areas that are technically off limits. He does a ton of stuff that's unethical, but unless you want to completely change how Skyfreeze works, that's business as usual too. Remember, it's not evil yaks versus heroic ponies here. Everyone in the Economic Council is just watching their own rears and doing what they think they can get away with, and he's just the best at it. Her green, slitted eyes scanned the dripping world beyond the canvas roof, the roads dark and gray. It also doesn't help that it's impossible to trace what he's actually doing at any given moment. See, see, when he wants something, he doesn't ask for it or even go get it. He'll give someone something else and act like he's doing him a favor, but he already knows what they'll do with it, and fat things wind up getting him what he wants. And if he does say he wants something or actively tries to get it, it means his real goal is something that'll happen as a side effect of that. So he gets all his goals accomplished by doing favors so specific he doesn't even need to ask, gets everyone dependent on his help, and if there ever are ponies he needs to flat out extort, say, me, he makes sure we can't do anything about it. He sounds like a very pleasant creature, Maple said, swallowing. I'm glad I've never met him. Who else is in Sky Freeze? Starlight asked when Maple didn't continue. Billy nodded. The Economic Council is basically a bunch of industry representatives from places who want to do business with Iron Ridge. Not Iron Ridge itself, mind you, just other places. The kind of places who own the huge shipping lines that sprung up to replace Sosa when well, they decided not to do their thing with the airships. The three main factions are Yakistan to the west, the Griffin Empire to the east, and a place up north called Varsidel. Huh. Maple shuffled, tucking Starlight saddlebags away. How come all we've heard about so far is the Yaks, then? Because the other two don't do much, Valet said with a shrug. Varsidel used to be back. They were the ones who started building the Skyport, actually, though I think they had a lot of funding and help from the Yaks. But a few months ago, they got into a huge war and have been converting most of their cargo ships to military and sending them off to fight. Then there's the Griffins, who have a huge amount of buying power, but don't have a fleet of their own, so they rely on the other two to ship stuff to them. Last I heard, I think they're trying to change that. Not that Varsidel's throughput is gone, but they haven't deployed anything yet. A war? Maple's eyes widened. Just how much is going on in the world? Hey, I'm concerned with Iron Ridge, Valet said. Everything beyond that is incidental and doesn't really affect me, so I haven't gone out of my way to find out what's happening. If you're really curious, there'll probably be tons of ponies once we reach Grand Acorn who keep close tabs and that kind of stuff, 
So you could ask around, but I can tell you right now it won't be useful info. Huh. Frowning, Maple sat under her blanket and said nothing. End of chapter 171